Jim from uh, from Fran Rosario at Pit Golf, and you know, a quick background. Um, uh, David Ostro, the founder and CEO of Fit Golf, has been a partner of the section. It's got David. It's got to be close to twenty-five years ish, somewhere in there. Um, I, I think so. So, um, they've been an incredible partner for us. You know, over the last almost three decades. Um, so, I, th um, I think uh, Franny, am I throwing it to you first? Or am I going to throw it over to David first? It'll, it'll start with me. Okay. So. Uh, well, without further ado, um, the, the man who uh, helped put this program together and, and uh, folks throughout the country, golf professionals and club club members are going to see uh, programs uh, like this throughout the country. Um, he's been meeting with um, other executive directors uh, to work out uh, this program to uh, make it as a benefit to our golf professionals uh, for, for you all to look like the heroes um, and, and be a, a resource at your, at your clubs and your facilities. So uh, I'm going to throw it over to Fran and he'll uh, kick things off. Thanks, Franny. Great. Thanks, Jeff. So I want to uh, thank all of you for taking the time out of your day to, to uh, join us to learn about these PGA tools that are available to help you through these tough times that we're experiencing right now. And many of you have either heard of us before or they, or you know us and but I, I want to take a moment for those that have never heard of us, don't know us. I want to clarify exactly what we do. Uh, I, I want to um, uh, really make sure that everybody knows that we have nothing to do with golf swing instruction, nothing to do with golf swing lessons. The only thing we do is we take a look at the body's functional movement and how that relates to the flight of the ball. Okay, just so that's out on the table there. Um, I also want to take a moment to thank Jeff for inviting us, but uh, also to thank him as the main catalyst in guiding us to create appropriate content that would help you the most, especially during these trying times. Uh, it, and the, the, the information and the guidance that Jeff has given us to create this program is actually now being popular, popularized throughout other sections in California and in Indiana and in the Carolinas. So you're seeing the same thing everybody else is about to see and implement. Uh, so let's start right away. The goal of this entire program is to strengthen or even open lines of communications between the golfer and the teaching professional. And that would be you. So let's keep that goal in mind in everything we show you today and in every component of this plan. Remember that it's just to build the communications. We find that the, the the, the more communications the golfer has with the instructor, the better everybody wins, uh, more possible lessons, uh, and at this time, even more online lessons. So let's take a look. I'm going to share a screen with you. Just give me a moment. All right, you should all be seeing this screen. PJ Philly section, the, the fitness educational resources. Jason, if you want to let me know that you see it, then I can move I on. It's okay. There. At the close of this presentation, um, uh, Jeff and Matt will probably be sending you the link to this exact content so you can review it yourself in even more detail. But let's start right from the top. I'm not going to read everything to you, but if you take a look at this, um, again, because of these trying times, Jeff has asked me to put together uh, – uh, ideas and programs that we have used in the past and make it work now, especially while you, while we're all sitting at home. So we want to take a look at several things here. We want to, we want to see what the program is, what are its components and what are the benefits to you, the golf professional and the benefits to you, as I already mentioned, some, it actually gives you an opportunity right here, creates more opportunity for possible online uh, swing lessons. But even more important is that if you, we keep educating the golfer, what we want to do is stir up conversation between the golfer and the teaching professional. That's our main goal. So the components, the, number, the first component is what's called a weekly exercise video. If, when you get this and you click on this button here, the next page will look like this. We have in place for you, and some of you already use this. There are several clubs out there that already use this program. It's 52 weeks of a very high quality uh, exercise, uh, which are covering series with these subjects, the faults and fixes, such as what, uh, what do you do when you have a chicken wing fault? What do you do um, 
when, when you have a wood ch wood chop fault, uh, what's an exercise fit for fix for it? The other subjects are the lower back and consistency and warm up exercises. So this is 52 entire an entire program of 52 um, uh, different topics. Okay, so here's an example of one. I'm going to run this through. They are all uh, about a minute long, and that so you won't see a five minute video Welcome here. Welcome to Faults and Fixes, where we at Fit Golf teach you simple exercises to fix common golf swing faults. This week we'll be addressing the wood chop swing fault. You can see here how a wood chop involves improper rotation of the upper body. Fixing this will increase control, power, and consistency. Let's take a look at the fix. This is half kneeling rotation. Half kneeling rotation will help improve balance and upper body separation from the lower body in the golf swing. You'll need a golf club and some kind of soft mat to put under your knees. Begin by getting on your right knee with your left foot in front of your right foot in a half kneeling position. Put the club behind your back and lock it in place like Jason does here. Turn your chest as far towards the elevated knee as you can and come back to center. Do this 10 times, then another time with the opposite leg position. Then repeat the sequence twice. You want to avoid common errors, such as moving your knees like Jason does here. Another error would be bowing your hips. Instead, keep your lower body stable and turn your chest. This is half kneeling rotation. That's it, gets right to the point. And after the uh, exercise is completed at the bottom of the screen, your viewer, which are your, your club members or your golfers or your students or your customers, your viewer will have a green button here. It says, uh, enjoy the um, exercise library at no cost. And it consists of hundreds and hundreds of other golf fitness exercises for them to take a look at. And we'll get into that in a little while, but let's go back to the original page here. So that is one of them right here. The second one is uh, we have put together a program to uh, provide free online assessments for you, the PGA member. So you'll be able to schedule an appointment, uh, an, a virtual appointment with one of our professionals to go through a 30-minute uh, assessment to take a look at how your body moves and relate to the flight of the ball or, or your swing and things of that nature. But it's primarily designed to teach the teachers to show you what uh, golfers go through when they come through our, our program here. Now, I do want to clarify, it's not, this is not necessarily to bring people to fit golf. This is to bring people to talk to the golf instructor. And the more communication we, we can uh, get between those two, the better everybody is. So if we take a look at this, oops, I clicked on it, darn it, I should not have done that. All right. Okay, so this is what the uh, PGA member would, uh, this is their program here. And if you take a look here, uh, the trainer will connect directly with you, and then the trainer will run you through a series of tests right here. The movement uh, tests are toe touching, overhead deep squat, pelvic rotation, and torso rotation. Based on those findings, um, they might give you more tests. But then you'll get the, the full report there to see how it relates to golf, and there is your assessment here. Now, how does this benefit you? Actually, gain, you gain knowledge, but even more importantly, we can do the same thing when we offer it to club members. And here's the club member assessment. And they will get the same type of an assessment. Uh, but the here's the biggest uh, change or adjustment we made is because we want to get that golfer to you, we decided that in, by the second visit, after they do the initial assessment and they want to come into a program, by that second visit, we're going to call either their current golf instructor. And if they don't have one, we're calling the club's teaching professional to invite them in on that second presentation, on the second uh, session. And so they'll have a good amount of time to uh, observe part of that session, but then we're also going to give that uh, instructor time to present themselves, uh, even do a, a quick three to five minute lesson with that person so that they have an opportunity to bring them in for their own type of a lesson. So we wanna include the PGA member uh, or any teaching professional in on this whole program so that this golfer has the combination of the two, okay? 
And there's the biggest twist that uh, uh, Jeff suggested we, we implement. So to sign up for this, the golfer will look at this list here and check whatever boxes pertain to them, and then they'll send it to us, and we'll pull them in for you, okay? Now we'll go back to, I have already, <clears throat> the last button is about articles. Again, it's about getting content. Uh, I did it again. I clicked on it again. Okay. It's about getting content to your golfer. So we're providing 12 months of articles for your, your newsletters. Now, this is a benefit to the PGA professional, to the PGA member, but because it is a benefit to you, you then have the right to take it to the club and offer it to the club, which then can offer it to their members at no cost to them as well. Okay, this is an example of the articles here. And I wanna show you the, the uh, quality of the uh, articles here. This particular subject is spine mobility and shoulder turn and what to do about that in terms of exercises. So we'll have several videos. This particular one has three videos that goes with it. All of them have at least one. All right, now there are other exercises. I mean, we, the, the, the subjects are gonna be strength exercises for power, and then we'll have new, uh, articles on nutrition for a round of golf, and we'll have articles on ways to prevent low back pain, and, and there's gonna be many more types of articles for you to share it to your golfers. Again, it's getting the content to your golfers. And at, at the end of every article is viewing the exercise library. And so, again, by allowing these people to get more and more content to educate themselves with, that's how we draw them to you, okay? Um, this is what the exercise library looks like. It's broken into different categories. I'm not going to go through any more, but you'll see when you get the link, uh, play around with it and see what's available. But there are hundreds of exercises in there for you. Okay. Did I catch everything on that, Jason? Oh, yes, you did. Okay, good. All right. So that is this program. All you need to do when you get the link, all you need to do is go to the original page, which uh, I probably clicked out of. There's a button at, there's a form at the bottom. Just fill out the form and we'll get all the tools to you. This does not cost the PGA member anything. This was created uh, uh, by us with Jeff's help and guidance. And actually, Jeff has been working on this for two years, so it's not something that's <laughs> uh, But right here in the first page is your form. So I'm going to move you over now to um, Dave Ostro and Jason. And what we're going to do is we're going to he's going to go through what you would see in your own assessment or what a uh, one of your uh, um, golfers would see in their assessment. OK, Dave. Yep. Can you please unshare? Oh, <laughs> of course. No worries. Give me just a moment to get our share live and okay. we'll, we'll get it going. All righty, and we want this page up. Well, good morning, everyone. It's uh, all right afternoon, I guess it is. It's uh, it's wonderful to talk and uh, share some information with you. Um, what I'm about to show you and what Jason's going to show you is what we're doing in our online sessions. What I'd like you to do to think about, could you use this kind of a vehicle to connect with the members of your clubs or your students and do lessons with them in their homes when they can't come to see you. What we've seen so far is that about 85% of our clients have moved from the office to this, uh, and they all seem to really like what we're doing. And I know there are lots of things that you all can do with your students in their homes and in their backyards to help their golf learning move along. Now, it's our hope that as we look through this, um, you know, you'll see that there are some ways that we can work closely here. Uh, as Fran said, we want to invite you into the sessions, some of these sessions that we're doing with your members. Um, you may see members who have never really worked with you before. Uh, and one of the things I'll say to you is that we're going to want to talk with you a little bit before we get online together with them so that we know what your priorities are. You can know what we found with them. Uh, and the idea is that golfers can work on their body and their golf swing while everything is closed during this really odd, crazy time. Um, in terms of what people need at home, nothing more than you have on, on, on now to view this webinar is all you need. Uh, the reason I showed you this picture is I'm just trying to show you the kind of space that someone is working in in their home. Now, if they're swinging a golf club, they might need a hair more space. 
but not a lot. The, the real key to this success is the internet connection. The higher speed connection you have, the better this works. There are a lot of different pieces of software that you can use. When we do the sessions with our clients, we're typically using Zoom, but I've had some use Hangouts and Skype as well. And you know that's really all that you need. What we're doing is an assessment of the client. What are you, what are you looking for? What are your goals? We'll do some testing on their movements. We then review the client with the client their findings. We'll send them, if they want to proceed forward, we'll send them their first exercise program and schedule a time to get online, hopefully with you all as their teacher and with us as their fitness instructor. Um, you know, for us, functional movements really is all there is. Um, we look at the functional movements are the key patterns of movements that affect athletic motion. Uh, you know, they usually are components of a particular movement, but they might not look like a movement. An example here is toe touch uh, and, and golf stability. There's uh, been a lot published on this. We've actually done research on several thousand people uh, and Titleist at the Performance Institute is now taking this information or has been for a number of years putting this information in. What we know is that, as an example, when golfers can't touch their toes, they're going to have trouble holding their spine posture stable, and you know there's going to be inconsistencies in their golf swing. That's one example. It doesn't look like a golf movement, touching your toes, but it's related to spine posture stability in the golf swing. These motions are controlled by the neurological system, and they're limited by our anatomy of tightnesses and weaknesses that we have. And problems can be on one side or on both sides of the body. Um, these things seem to be the norm in our society. So this is the question I get a lot is, well, you know, what do, what do you see? How often do you see this? What I'll say to you is that just about everyone who we see has some combination of the of problems with the four tests we're going to show you here and then the tests that fall underneath it. And, and so it's become kind of the norm in our society to have these problems, except this norm gets in the way of people being able to learn movement, being able to be proficient in athletics and not getting hurt. Um, for us, these are the single most important as aspects of athletic movements. Golf is one of those. And each movement that we're gonna go over is related to a specific thing in the golf swing. Uh, there are 12, as the title, as Greg Rose and company have identified, there are 12 major functional movement tests. We're gonna look at four of them here. The majority of these we do look at online with our clients. So uh, first test is toe touch. And again, that's uh, when you can't do this, we're going to see students have difficulty stabilizing their spine posture at the top, at impact and back. We're going to see lots of changes in angles. This requires hamstring mobility, spine mobility, hip mobility, and great stability in the pelvis, knees, and feet. Also requires a good forward backward weight shift. The next test that we look at with people is an overhead deep squat. We find that golfers who don't do this well tend to early extend 99% of the time. This requires great mobility in the hips, ankles, and the lats. Lats are sort of the upper back, under arms, and into the shoulders. And it requires great stability in the knees, the pelvis, and the core. So these two tests that we've looked at, toe touch and, hams uh, and deep squat, are related to someone's ability to maintain their postures throughout the golf swing. These next two tests are different. They're looking at, at a golfer's ability to rotate in the golf swing, which has to do in, in large part with power generation and sequencing. Uh, this is pelvic rotation test where the pelvis turns back and forth. It requires great mobility in the mid back, the thoracic spine and in the hips, and it requires great stability in the pelvic cores and knees. And then finally, we have the torso rotation test. Uh, this will challenge, we'll see people who have challenges with ball control accuracy and distance when they have problems doing this test. This requires great mobility in the thoracic spine, the rib cage area, and good scapular or shoulder blade and pelvic stability. So those are the, those are the four basic tests we're doing. Can, you know, you probably can think of, of a half a dozen things that you would look at with a golfer in their house that would help you to, to, to determine what you need to do with them in terms of instruction. Um, there are other tests that we do depending on what we see as the challenges they have and those top, we call those the top tests and the top four tests. And we can run through these. It's a, a topic for another conversation, but we can get into it if we want to. And then what we thought it would be really good to have Jason run through all these tests with you all. And I invite you all to stand up while he's doing this and do the movements that he's doing so that you can feel them and experience them. And Jason's going to talk a little bit about how this relates to golf swing as he does them. All right, Jason, I'm going to stop the share and give it back to you. Okay. Hey everyone. Um, so again, as Dave said, I'm going to invite you all to stand up and actually do these tests. 
Um, I know you're either on your own or if you're not, you got your spouse, your significant other, your kids around, so there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Um, I think actually doing the test will really help you understand uh, what we're trying to do here at FitGov. So um, if you guys are up, we're going to start our first test. It's called the toe touch test, and it's performed exactly how you think it would be. So we ask our golfers to stand nice and tall, place their feet together. We want to make sure the toes and heels are touching. We're going to overlap the hands and next we're going to forward bend in an attempt to touch the toes. Now the most common mistake or issue we see with this is some knee bend. So they'll touch their toes, but in order to do so, they need to bend their knees or they'll forward bend and not get anywhere close to the toes. Right, so issues like this would tell us that a golfer lacks basic mobility, maybe in their hamstrings, their hips, their spine. It may mean they have weak cores or they lack basic motor control, you could call that coordination, to perform the movement. And like Dave said, we know through the research that if a golfer can't touch their toes, they're more likely to lose posture in their golf swing. Now, the next test called the overhead deep squat test is a little bit harder. And what I'll say is that regardless of the age or gender, a lot of golfers struggle with this. So I want you to do this. I want you to set up with your feet about hip or shoulder width apart. You're going to raise your arms up nice and high. Now, keeping your heels down, don't let your heels lift up. I want you to perform a deep squat like this. By the way, if you've had knee replacements, you're not going to That's a good point. Now, the most common mistakes or issues with deep squat is we'll see a total collapse of the upper body. We'll only see a partial squat. Or I'll show you from this angle, we often see the knees cave in here. Right? So any of these issues, again, would indicate a lack of joint mobility. And with this test, there's a lot of joints involved. So we're looking at ankles, knees, hips, spine, shoulders. It could indicate a lack of strength in the core or upper back, um, or again, it could indicate poor motor control or coordination, the ability to actually perform the movement. <laughs> Most times, it's gonna be a combination of at least two or three of those things. So again, we kind of lump toe touch and deep squat into one category. We know that failing those tests leads to instability in the golf swing, and we can say it comes back and is gonna affect the ability of a golfer to be a consistent ball striker. Right? And we all know working in this, in this industry is that golfers, with well, their primary goal, many of them, is to be a more consistent ball striker, right? So the next two tests, we're going to look at the ability of a golfer to create good upper body and lower body rotation. And more specifically, we're looking at their ability to separate the two things. So the first one we're going to do is called the pelvic rotation test. I want you to get into mid-range iron posture, about a five iron stance. Cross your arms, and then from here, I want you to rotate your pelvis without remaining stable in your lower body. The most common mistakes we see here is the inability to keep stable in the upper body, so they start turning their heads and their shoulders go too. Or, and oftentimes both, we will see excessive lateral movement or side-to-side -side movement instead of true pelvis rotation. So, a failure of the pelvic rotation test would indicate poor hip mobility, poor spine mobility, uh, weak core, or bad coordination or motor control. Now, this one's probably a little bit easier to conceptualize the, the golf swing implications, right? Because we see a lot of this in the golf swing. So a golfer that can't pelvic rotate or can't perform the movement properly is less likely to sequence their downswing well or create lag in the transition. Um, and if we see a lateral movement pattern with the pelvic rotation, obviously that golfer we know is more likely to sway and slide through the swing. Um, the last test is the torso rotation test, very similar to pelvic rotation. We're just going to do the opposite. So I want you to turn your shoulders, keep your lower body stable, right? And what we're looking for here is a rock solid lower body. Now, this isn't a test for range of motion, so I don't want you to try to turn as far as you can. That is something we test for, but we'll usually do it later on with an orthopedic test. So for this one, just little swivels, and I want you to keep your lower body as still as possible. Now, the most common mistake with this, obviously, is going to be the lower body rotates with shoulder rotation. And oftentimes, especially with the older population, 
I'll see a really bad movement pattern of the shoulder turn, right? I see this a lot, which is really kind of lower back and pelvis movement as opposed to true upper spine or thoracic spine rotation movement. So whereas the, uh, the toe touch and the deep squat tests are gonna be predictors of consistency, the pelvic rotation and torso rotation tests are more predictors of power, although they absolutely are gonna influence the ability to position the body well in the golf swing and be consistent as well. Um, so I hope you guys did the test. And um, you know, I hope you feel like you have the information now to objectively look at your students and be able to even test them in these ways to figure out if some of their issues in their golf swing are technical, physical, or maybe a little bit of both. And trust me, 99% of the time, it is a little bit of both. So we really rely on you guys to help get the outcomes too. Um, so if you guys have any questions, um, you can type them in the question comment if you wanna see the research or you have more questions about the implications of the test, just let us know. Great, thanks, Jason. Thanks. All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint that I have here. Take me just a moment to get there. All right, so, um, you know, we have some tests we've done. Um, we figured some stuff out about you as a golfer, and we have some tendencies that we're going to see in your golf swing as a result. And so we could lay out a fitness training program that would be based on those findings. If someone can't pass or fails one of those tests, then the exercise program is going to be geared towards helping them fix that particular problem. Uh, the functional progressions is what we use. It's based on developmental training. So we think about what developmental training is, is you know, starting at lowest levels, laying on the ground, rolling around, bridging, things like that, working to positions that are vertical in athletic postures, doing similar kinds of movements. And then we typically see folks either once a week or every other week online. It depends to some degree on how tight they are and how much work they want to do and what their time really is. And I can tell you half of the guys I'm seeing now, we were seeing in the office, I'm now seeing once a week and the other half I'm seeing every other week or every 16 or 17 days. So we develop a program for the golfer. And, and if the golfer wants to move forward with that program, then we'll send them an email. Here's the email. This is an example. This is an actual email of the young lady that you saw in the earlier picture uh, of her room. Oh, typo. Sorry about that. Uh, and, and she had problems with a bridge and a squat and a toe touch. And so you can see we've given her exercises to begin to do that. The, the URLs, the, the names are URLs that are hyperlinked. Uh, and then we give specific instructions, do this many things, don't do this, you know, do it this way or do it that way. And it's different than what's on the PDF. Um, and then sets and reps. So that's what the programs are going to look like. And each time we see them, we'll remeasure these things that they've been working on and uh, give them the next level of difficulties. If you think about what you're doing with a golfer, uh, are there things that you have as progressions? Do you start with grip stance and posture with them? Once you've done that, do you begin to move towards movements in one direction or the other or isolate different parts of the body? You know, how do you how do you do these things and how do we make those things really trainable for, for your student who's at home right now? Uh, and we're happy to help you with that. Uh, you know, if you need help with the technology stuff, if you need help kind of thinking through how would I make this work for my students, we're going to give you our emails and our phone numbers and, and all of that information. And we encourage you to call us. We're happy to do this for you. This is a, for, for us, We've been a partner with the section so long. We want to do anything we can to help the section and its members. You guys have been so good to us over the years. There's only one more thing I have, and this is one of my soapbox topics. I do a lot of training with junior golfers online. Uh, I have a following in the Pacific Northwest, and we've, we've worked with juniors locally this way as well. Um, and we have some rules when we're working with juniors. They're obvious probably, but they're for everyone's safety. We must have a parent in the room while we're online. In other words, if I have a scheduled appointment with a person under 18 and we, we get online and I don't see or hear the parent, I ask the student where the parent is. And if the parent's not in the house and can't come in for the session, then we basically find another time and reschedule them when everybody could be there. The other rule that I have that's hard fast is that any communication between me and that junior golfer or that junior golfer and me, including emails, text messages, and phone calls, has to include the parent in the loop so they see everything that's going on. That gives parents 
great comfort uh, that we're doing the right things with our kids because there, you know, there are some creeps out there and we don't want to be one of those. And so this is one of our ways of demonstrating to the parent that we're really on the up and up and we're really just trying to help the kid along. So hard, fast rules, those are non-negotiables. If the parent doesn't agree or the kid doesn't agree, then we don't do the sessions. It's that simple. Uh, and then finally, I give you our contact information. It's Fran's information. Oops, that should be Jason. Sorry. Uh, I'll I'll share this again with Jason's information in it. Totally sorry about that. Uh, and, don't call and Sacramento. Right. What's that? Don't call Sacramento. Yeah, please don't call Greg in Sacramento, but we'll get the information to you for Jason. And uh, I'm going to open this to questions. I'm going to stop my share. And, uh, you know, put your questions in the sidebar if you'd like. If you want to come on and ask them, feel free to do that. Uh, whatever works for you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit that screen with Jason's information now and put it back up in a minute while you're asking your questions. Jeff, I guess I'll give it back to you. Hello. Hey, Dave. I got you. I'm sorry. I uh, just needed to unmute myself. No worries. Um, I think at this point, um, if somebody has a question, they can throw it up um, in the chat. Um, you can certainly you can certainly try to unmute yourself, but the easiest way would probably be to do it in the chat. If somebody has any questions for uh, for Dave or any of the other staff from Fit Golf. If Matt has any more information to share while we're waiting, that's okay too. I think everybody. I think I think Jay put everybody to sleep. And like they're all moaning and groaning on the ground. They got to get up and stretch. <laughs> oh, my goodness, we oh, took them. Oh, uh, here we go. Um, this is from Joe Mismer. Uh, before assessments, do you screen for injuries? Uh, I think that we could say there's a conversation about an injury history. Um, and if they have injury history, we'll look at that while we're on the line with them. Okay. I'd like to add, add to that. As we are calling them to set up the appointment, that those questions are brought up. Are there any injuries that we need to know about? Are there any restrictions of concern that we need to know about? So we usually get that in the appointment setting stage as well as Dave and Jason asking them at the uh, uh, when they when they come to their appointment. Thanks. I think the other cool thing, and Fran, something you and I talked about. Um, the other cool thing about the entire program is, you know, I think everybody. Uh, everybody struggles a little bit for content, right? You know, you know, when we're sitting there talking, trying to communicate with our members or our customers, and um, you know, some folks have the ability uh, to be able to um, create that content. And but you know, when you look at uh, the quality um, and the expertise behind the content that this program has, it's really, it's really first class. I think, it, I think it'll go a really long way in impressing your your members or your customers or your students. Um, you know. Uh, as being a real asset to uh, whatever programs you're running. Yeah. Jeff, I've had uh, some clients would call or, or golfers would call me if they had had a week where they didn't get the exercise or some of the content and they wondered if we took them off the list. Yeah. <laughs> so there's an interest in the content. Um, George McNamara asked a question here and, and I can partially answer it in, in friend. Uh, friend or you guys can, can follow up. Uh, what is the cost of the program? So, so currently, George, um, the cost of the program, it's free to you, um, to you to use for your customers. And then uh, the assessment, um, I believe, is free as well. Uh, as they go through it. If ultimately um, your student or customer wanted to engage with Fit Golf uh, for programming, that would be a different conversation. But as far as the functional movement screening um, and the content, that is all uh, at no charge, correct? The, the initial movement, the initial online session with them is no charge. There's no question about that. And then if they want to get involved with us and do a program where they have some repetitive visits with us, there is cost involved with that. And, you know, we'll, if, if the golf pro is involved with us on those sessions, uh, clearly there's going to be something going to the pro for their time on that as well. Great. Anybody else? Yeah, I see another question oh, from I'm Scott. Sorry. There we go. Scott Riley. Scott Riley, what are your timing points to reevaluate to reevaluate each student's progress once people are in the process every week, month, two months, et cetera? Every time they get online, there's reevaluation that goes on. The reevaluation is of what we were working on 
as opposed to the total body reevaluation. Um, and then uh, every time we give them new stuff, then new things get reevaluated the next time we see them. Jason, do you have anything to add to that? No, I mean, every session online, in person, it's it's always about the reevaluation. So they're getting reevaluated every time we see them. Nice. Um, from Josh Bayshore, uh, if limitations are very severe, i.e. back, knee replacement, things like that, do you recommend staying away from those areas or is it there is, or is there a way to work around those areas? Uh, compound exercises or just work with what they are capable of doing. I guess I'll take that, Jason. Um, so it, it really depends on what the issue is, how long it's been going on, what they've had done. If someone has knee replacements, we know we're never going to get a normal deep squat, but we can train that motion using its components to help the person be more stable over a golf ball. The, 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 the mechanical nature of a, of a joint replacement in the knee prevents the knee from going past about 100 degrees of flexion. So, you know, a full deep squat, they got to get the hips below the knees. That's never going to happen once they've had their knees replaced. You know, if they've had severe back problems that are very active, we'll actually ask them to get their back dealt with before we start with them. If they've had a past back problem, I don't usually worry about that because the things that we do typically will help and reinforce that from being a problem. Um, so it, it's, it really is individual, depends on the kinds of problem they present with uh, and, and how severe and longstanding they are and what kinds of things they've had done uh, to remedy those problems in the, the time leading up to our time together. Nice. Anyone else? Okay, I'm going to share that contact screen again, if it's okay with you, Jeff. Absolutely. All right. It's amazing when you, let's see, present now, view the screen. We want to do that one. Share it. And then I want to hit F5. <clears throat> Uh, while, while Dave's doing that, hey, Jay, um, you know, obviously working with uh, the folks here in the area, and I know, I know David say there are, said there are some, you know, some, some core movements, uh, some core issues, but what have you seen as a, as a whole? Is there a theme out there with golfers, what their, you know, what their biggest ailments are? Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on, <clears throat> excuse me, the demographic of the golfer. Obviously, junior considerations are going to be a lot different than someone who's middle-aged. Um, there's gender considerations, male versus female. Um, I would say the majority of clients that I work with are middle-aged men. And I would say 90% of the time, most of those guys have severe limitations in hip mobility and thoracic spine mobility. And those are the key sources of rotation in the golf swing. So not only do those problems um, obviously pose limitations um, for their golf swing in particular, but they can also lead to a lot of chronic lower back pain, stiffness, knee pain, things like that. So I would say with the people who we work with, uh, for the most point, it's going to be joint mobility from those places that we rotate. Um, junior golfers are completely different. They usually have all the range of motion that they need, but absolutely no strength to control it. So unlike a, an adult program, their programs will mostly consist of um, first off athletic development and then uh, strength and stability training. So everybody's different and that's why we thoroughly assess everyone that comes in here and we're constantly reassessing because every golfer that we see poses a different issue. What's, um, what's your opinion on you know weight training versus body movement, things like that? Um, they're all foundational parts of a good fitness program. Um, again, if I'm starting with someone who's new, uh, if we want to make sure that they have the mobility required to swing a golf club well. <laughs> and we're going to reinforce that with basic strength training. You know, I'm talking about body weight stuff, floor exercises where they're strengthening their glutes and their abs. When they're proficient in things like the squat and the toe touch and their functional movement is good, then we start to prioritize strength training, squats, split squats, lunges, deadlifts, kettlebell swings. But we're not really getting to those power moves until we know the golfer moves well. And moving well means they're mobile, they can squat, they can touch their toes, they can hold a bridge, um, and they're doing all those things pain-free. So they're all very important. We just prioritize them at different points in a program. Okay. Um, Eric Pivoto just sent in, 
Uh, I understand it's tailored for uh, the golfer, but do you have, um, is, there, is there an average length of, of an engagement with a, with a customer for you all, average length of a plan? Yeah, Dave, do you want to comment on that? Do you want me? Sure. Um, so let's see, junior golfers that we work with typically are, until they go off to college, whatever that is, there are thousands of progressions to, to build strength and mobility. With adults, it's until the issues really are resolved, uh, it could be five times we get together with somebody. It could be six, could be seven, could be 12. I would say that our average is probably 10 or 11 times that we see somebody in the office and, and in these online sessions, it's a little bit more than that. And then do you gents have a, uh, have an opinion on, um, you know, the new ADM model and, and, you know, how to follow that. I know uh, PGA of America has got a big push on, on ADM and uh, PGA.coach, things like that. You'd have to tell me what AVM is. I'm sorry. The, um, athletic development model. And, and I think. Oh, yeah. Sure. Okay. That's a title. Is that like Titleist athletic development program that we're using? Uh, I think it's, you know, in, in general, it's, you know, the, um, it's backed by the USOC and I know, uh, you know, USA hockey's used it, you know, the, yeah, it's, a, it's the same talk. kind of, same kind of program, strongly mm -hmm. endorse that kind of work. <clears throat> where, they're not, where they're not overly specializing in one movement. Right. Right. Anybody else? Anything good for the group? Everybody have what they need off the screen share that I have going on. I can cancel it. And Jeff, yeah, if you want, if I can send you this. I can send you this presentation, Jeff, and then if people want it, you can send it out to them. That'll be It'll great. also be on the uh, the video recording that we uh, that we'll share later this week as well. Okay. All right. Awesome. All right. Um, Jens, any closing thoughts? Just thanks for giving us the opportunity to be here and share some information. And frankly, if anybody online wants to try and work out how can you do this kind of work with your students call me. I'm, I'm happy to help you all. I don't want money from you. I just, we want to help you survive what's going on now and maybe even thrive through what's going on now. And we know that that's good for the game. So we're happy to help in any way we can. Yeah. I'd just like to make a comment. If there's any particular type of content um, that you think either you, your, your peers or your students um, would like to hear about or you would like us to write about or, or video, just let us know. We're always looking for opinions of uh, the God professionals and their students of, of, of what they think content would be relevant to them. So I'm always looking for ideas. So if there's something you want to learn about, just let us know. Great. Thanks. Uh, Franny, anything else? Uh, no, you, you mentioned that uh, this will be available on, on your site. Um, yes. Can we also send out a follow-up link of these pages that I showed earlier um, uh, in the event they don't get to your site? Absolutely. Yes. That's great. I can work with you on that. Okay, perfect. Thanks. All right. Well, hey, once again, uh, Jens, thanks so much uh, for the time and the content. Great job. Uh, thanks to, every, again, everyone uh, joining us today, whether it was this morning or, or here this afternoon. Um, you know, please feel free to reach out to us at any time. Please stay safe and healthy at home. And, um, you know, if we don't talk to you, have a great weekend. Uh, uh, tomorrow's Friday. Good for you tomorrow. <laughs> so here we go, right? <laughs> so long, everyone. Guys, right, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody.